Nobody could have predicted the value of certain muscle cars when these things first hit the streets back in the day. So we thought it'd be fun to buzz back in time and look at what the market was on certain muscle cars when they were new. Back in 1968, my parents bought a house in the suburbs of Chicago for $24,000. The average U.S. household income was $5,571 back in 68. And you could go down to your Chevrolet dealer and purchase a brand new hardtop six-cylinder base model Camaro for $2,500. By comparison, the average household income today is about $59,000 and a new base model Camaro starts around $26,900. And the house my folks bought for 24 grand, well, is now worth well over half a mil. But in this case, our 68 Z28, featured in episode 131 of Muscle Car of the Week, was far from a base model Camaro, complete with a high-strung 302 and a four-speed, plus the rest of the Z28 suspension goodies. And these stickered for about 3,800 bucks, and just over a dollar a pound. And today's hottest Camaro, the ZL1, tips the scales at 3,842 pounds for $64,000. And that comes out to be about $16.60 a pound. And interestingly, in today's market, a perfect 68Z28 is worth about 20 grand more than the new ZL1. Will the new ZL1 increase over the next 50 years? Only time will tell. Mustangs have always been marketed as fun and affordable cars to own, but the price quickly rose as soon as you started adding performance options. 1970 Boss 302s, like our sweet grabber green version from the Muscle Car of the Week episode number 130, sold new for about 3,700 bucks, or around $24,000 using today's dollars. But today, a pristine example of a 1970 Boss 302 with the performance suspension, 290 horsepower rated 302 V8, four speed, and other boss styling accents, well, it can set you back more than 34 times more than the original base price of $3,700. For those looking for something a bit bigger than a Mustang or a Camaro, Chevrolet offered the Chevelle complete with the SS high performance versions like our 1970 SS 396 convertible from episode 128. Their style and performance motivated over 49,000 people to slap down just over 3,600 bucks for one, with options adding to the bottom line, of course. Ours is a Survivor convertible wearing original paint, SS stripes, pearl white bucket seat interior, and the 350 horsepower 396 V8. It's long on options with a power top, air conditioning, and even an eight track tape system, which all added to the sticker price. But it's wild to think you could have drove this home from the dealer for just over $4,500 when it was new. Some muscle cars offered luxury and performance, like this 1971 Pontiac GTO Judge convertible. This was an awesome car, and we featured it in our episode number 202. It's powered by a 455 HOV8 and backed with an automatic transmission. And although it's emblazoned with bright stripes and spoilers, this Judge still kept a comfortable ride and a lush interior. These were not cheap cars back in 71, as a fully loaded version could have easily crossed $6,000. And that's Cadillac territory for the time. And even so, that translates to only about 37,000 in today's dollars which seems like a very fair deal for this much of a car. And to think, only 17 of these were built. Corvettes have always been pricey, and this 1968 L88 427 version from episode 117 was the top performance offering in 1968. The L88 was really intended to be a race-only engine, and these high-compression machines were supposed to just be sold to racers, but many made it to the street. The L88 engine was said to be in the 425 horsepower range, but most accept that they revved higher than the rated power RPM and were easily over the 500 horsepower mark at their peak. Only 80 people were lucky enough to buy one in 68, and the L88 option added nearly a thousand bucks to the $4,663 base price of the 68 Corvette Coupe. 
add in the heavy duty four speed transmission and other goodies, and you can see how these cars became very pricey, adding to their rarity. That $6,500 investment surely paid off though. Today, LED8s are some of the most valuable Corvettes of all. But the most amazing investment muscle car of all would have to be the Hemi Cuda convertible, like the one we featured from the Brothers Collection in episode number 245 of Muscle Car of the Week. The 1971 Cuda convertible was a very low production car, and it started at $3,291. If you add another 883 bucks for the 426 Hemi option, plus other creature comforts and performance goodies, and you could rack up a healthy car payment even for 1971. And that's part of the reason that only 11 were sold in the US. But here's a mind-blowing statistic. Translate today's seven-figure values for these cars back into 1971 dollars, and a Hemi Cuda convertible would have cost over 500 grand in 1971. We're just happy that muscle cars continue to be a valuable part of our lives, and even though some have reached levels far beyond the reach of average enthusiasts, those cars help keep the interest up for the more common cars that the rest of us can afford. I'd gladly pay a dollar a pound for a 68 Z28. As always, we'd like to thank the Brothers Collection for letting us play with their cool cars, and we're always up for feedback if you want to share your comments, and we welcome you to subscribe to our channel so you catch the next episode of Muscle Car of the Week.